What's up, Army? Welcome back to Redemption 46 Studios. I'm Nick. I'm Keith. I'm Curtis. And I'm Jarek. I know the vibes. Y'all seen the picture. I seen the thumbnail. Y'all know why y'all here. August D, 724148. This is your first time on the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Become a real one today. Ironically, it's 72,480 y'all who are not subscribed. <laughs> Somebody caught me. It's like, damn, he knew. <laughs> you, I caught you. Don't you dare watch the rest of this video without hitting that subscribe button. Put yeah. your noodles down. Yeah, stop. Click it. For more content like this, jump on the Patreon. We're going to be getting into more August D stuff. Album review coming soon. Live versions of things that you love. Hype games. In the Soup. Run BTS. Rise of Bang Tang. And more content like that. Shut your Shut your No long talk. Hip hop is back. Let's jump into some real shit. Hip hop is back. Got to. That bass line nasty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Hip-hop back. God damn. Damn. He was snapping. A lot of idols can't do that, man. A lot of idols, uh, idols can't, can't do that, rap. man. I like, I like, I love struggle rap. You know, I related to a lot of the things he was he was rapping about, you know. Um, wanting bigger for myself, having to work a part, uh, part-time job, nine to five. You know, being jealous of people who had things that I didn't have. It's a relatable story. Um, Universal. shout out to him, mm-hmm. you know, Graveyard for using the Philly word dickhead. Mm-hmm. Not really a Philly word, but it's associated here because there's a lot of dickheads around. That made me feel comfortable when he said it and yeah, shit. Like, I, it felt because you read it in the Philly, uh, Philly slang, yeah. But it's y'all know my thing a long time on this channel. Sometimes, like, music that's so dope 
is just like you know universal and shit mm -hmm. to where even if we didn't speak the same language i kind of knew what you was talking about this beat is kind of a pain in your voice it, mm -hmm. real shit like and this beat is already kind of one of like those those traditional kind of hip-hop beats to kind of talk your shit but like you said you can hear the pain in, the vo in his voice i like his inflections on here and kind of just almost talking to the point where you frustrated or just kind of like just yo like you know what i mean like he listened to me or this was going on like it's just you can feel like you can feel all the passion mm -hmm. yeah. um it's like and it's just so re it's, it's so relatable like you yeah it's like talking to a brick wall and he's just trying to break that brick wall down yep pretty much um but yeah with that being said this shit is this shit is fire um this is on d1 um like you know his first mixtape full scholarship um <laughs> you would think so and shit uh, went to the leagues right there um but nah um and i like to just like it feels so like like personal i think mm -hmm. niggas used to have these conversations with drake early on to where you know shit be so some of the lyrics be so personal this you and shit like you know what i mean like yo remember at 255 when we first got the soul and they pulled us over and da 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 and you just like nah this shit Kind of like story time and shit. Like, I love <laughs> good story time, right? You feel me? Especially when you rapping about, you know, real shit. Like, the struggle. You know what I mean? Like, not everybody, you know, I, I love when rappers are, aren't afraid to talk about things that are usually uncomfortable to talk about. You know, I don't want to talk about, you know, how, which he does in the song about how, you know, there's other people who have more than him. He's going to schools and these kids are like spending like his weekly allowance on just like alcohol and random shit and just being surrounded by people who have more than you and just having that desire and knowing that, you know, you're in a bad situation now, but I am him. One day I'm going to get out of this and you will see how great I am. Mm -hmm. It's all to him. He's showing us. And just went about it like the right way too. Um, like didn't have to like trade his soul to the devil. Um, didn't have to do any uh like, you know, dumb shit. Wasn't didn't get popping off like a viral moment. Literally got popping off of like just hard work, dedication. Mm -hmm. And every time he's rapping and stuff, you can kinda just hear that like that almost like I had to become the breadwinner for the family type vibe. Mm -hmm. Or to where, you know, sometimes and I can't speak like, you know, for everybody on the panel. Sometimes as a young man in your family, it feels like you might have to shield the burden of trying to change maybe generational curses that are put in your family. And I'm not trying to turn this into something else, but just to where, you know, you like, yeah, just to where you might be like, you know, I might, I might have to be the first person in my family to graduate high school or, you know, to, right. to go to college or I was the first person in my family to, you know, tell my mom she can like, you know, not work or I'm trying to like, you know, get you know the family a house or i'm trying to you know put generational wealth uh like with inside of your family and shit and you know coming from the bottom that shit is hard you you know look at other people kind of like living a life better than you and you're trying your best not to be jealous but i do like that you know he was able to kind of talk and just like you said jerry not be too comfortable we hear it most of the time in philly and shit whether it's like core with other artists and stuff and it's like you know it's it's a line that doesn't feel like it's talked about much just in K-pop with idols really because more so things are glamorous mm -hmm. or more so it's escapism where they might be talking about something that isn't based in reality. Um, so, you know, I just like the whole him going back to kind of the roots and really talking about everything that was popping around the time of 20 um, because on this time, well, on the channel now, we kind of realize how important turning 20 is for them. You're no longer a teenager. You're no longer seen as like a child. It's time for you to be a man, make decisions, and just, you know, really start your life. And your name is very important in us, K. So, you know, you you got big shoes to fill and a lot to do. That's my spill. Um, I thought this was really good. I'm not really going to touch on um, some of it because you guys have said it eloquently, and I'm leaving it to that. Um, but the delivery of his voice in this song, uh, kind of struck me. Mm. It was not as surgical as we've heard him um, in some of the BTS stuff or even some of the D2 stuff. Um, and you could probably talk that to, oh, well, you know, he's refining his style. Like, eh, but he's clean in BTS. I think, I think 
the way it came across was exactly how it was meant to come across. Um, a little scattered, some things not off beat, but not like crisp on the beat. Like there was a like maybe a half second where he just kind of delayed or belayed the the verse or didn't hit the the beat like he normally would or attack it the way he normally would. Um, kind of just like he was trying to tell a story while rambling at the same time. Um, just like little things like that to kind of tell the story within the story, like voice inflections and thing like that, things like that. Um, all fire aspects of how he gets his art across and how he gets his story across. Um, I, I kind of want to hear the rest of the story. Like, you know, you, it seems like you kind of got, you know, his humble beginnings up until the point where he was getting ready to debut um, and pretty much change the world with his sound, which he did. Um, I don't know, this was, this was very, uh, even though like, obviously I'm hanging off every word, but I, you know, reading off every word, but you know, um, it still kept you very, very engaged. Mm. <laughs> it still kept you very, uh, very, you know, enthralled in, into a story. And, you know, like Jarek said, a good storyteller rapper is, is always a good thing. I was expecting a, a LA night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I, I like I like this a lot. Uh for one, definitely, you know, that, that whole aspect of, you know, I'm up here and I'm venting these frustrations because it's like I don't have that safety net. Um you know, if I don't make it, you know, my family might not, like, eat tonight or, like, that kind of thing. Like, that's kind of the, the energy, um, you know, the struggle where it's, like, I have no choice but to make it. Um, almost like the, the whole Dark Knight Rises thing. It's, like, how do you make that jump? It's, like, no safety net. You know, you have to give the you, – you essentially are throwing the, the potential of your life into this. Um, and if you kind of backpedal or half-step it or anything, you know, you're never going to make it. Um, so you just get that that sense of urgency, you know, through, um, you know, certainly with the, as Keith had alluded to as well, uh, the energy and his delivery and everything. But certainly um, it, it just it almost feels like he just like, you know, press record and just started venting, you know, um, it, like it doesn't almost feel like anything was, was particularly pen to paper. Like it, it feels really um, like raw emotion. Um, and I like that a lot as well. Um, I'm not sure, of course, if that was the case, but uh, nonetheless, it just the, the energy felt that way. Um, so that whole aspect of, you know, I have to provide for my family, I have to go to school, you know, I'm, I'm my tired body, um, all these aspects that he's, you know, talking about in the lyrics as, as well, where it's like, you know, I have to work this graveyard shift. Um, and it was like, you did it, uh, you know, for the fame or you're doing it for some kind of, you know, glorification. He's like, no, I did it because I needed money. Like, you know, we needed to, to eat. And I believe, I don't remember if it was in, uh, you know, Rise or other kind of things, but I believe there was also instances of him, you know, kind of, uh, producing beats in, in the underground for people who, like, either didn't pay him yeah, or wasn't kinda, paying him and shit. Yeah, so, I like, imagine, like, going through all this and kind of the money that you're putting out, you know, which is also you're trying to make connections and, and you know, like, help out other artists and stuff, and then you kind of get shortchanged, uh, you know, so instances like that, and you just imagine all that frustration. Um, and also taking into account a little bit of his journey with respect to, um, you know, how the idol world is seen versus the underground rap. So basically where idol is seen as like, you know, the glorification aspects or, or you know, the, the almost, I don't, I don't want to say cookie cutter, but just there's that, there's that uh, almost bridge between underground rap and that. But he's basically coming at it from the other side where it's like, you know, um, and that was a big thing, of course, in, you know, a later debate, um, you know, with Shug and, you know, the members of BTS as far as, you know, what idol music is versus rap or, or kind of, um, you know, those instances. So you definitely feel like the, the um, like that feels like a very fresh thing for him in this and uh definitely another thing i like about it too is the fact that this is august d and everything this is on you know d1 mind you uh you know in the beginning he kept a lot of you know his injuries and his you know depression and all the other things he was going through he kept it really hidden you know for the for the fail uh for the the fear of you know getting cut and have and failing you know if all these things were kind of exposed uh so the whole alter ego kind of character thing of august d and these inner emotions where it's like i'm jealous of that kid you know, who was rich and who, you know, got the nice car right when they graduated, you know, um, like I'm jealous of those things. And that's certainly, uh, I believe, uh, Give It To Me as well is kind of on um, D1 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. It's the track before this, it's the, it's, I think Give It this, To Me is the first joint and then yeah. it's a skit 
and then it's this. Okay, so that that makes perfect sense then, in the in um in the sense that you know, give it to me is like I, I want the glory, I want the fame, I want you know all these uh, things that are, are seen as almost uh, the things you you want to be cautionary of. My um, favorite August D track. Yeah, no, and, and you know, rightfully so. I you know, it's it's an incredible track, but it's like I like the the persona of like I have to look within myself persona. and kind of acknowledge these things. Ironically, the shadow self. Um, shadow. So I, I just think that that was really well presented and, you know, the flow and, and everything in which he, he kind of articulated that I, I thought was was really great as well. Um, and then lastly, I kind of like the wordplay where he said, you know, um, he wanted to be like the principal of, a, you know, like a, a music academy or something like as far as early inspiration, I assume. Um, but then like kind of almost referring to your principles as a person, kind of um, if there was anything intended in that. Um, but I thought that that was like also like really cool as well. He has fire ass regular uh, from fire ass solo content. Because we yeah, always, you know, talk about that. When, obviously, when it's everybody's birthday, we go into, like, what's their mm -hmm. their top three and everything. First off, I think Detchitai is the highest watched of anything that's BTS solo related. Um, Keith, I know you got an affinity for, um, like, Shadow. Um, Kurt, I know First Love, I think, is, um, you, you hold that very high regard, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just I hold, like, I hold a lot of them. <laughs> like, to be fair, yeah. nah, but it's just well, like I mean, that's a lot it's of like fire. Ass was kind of one of the first, like especially in like respect to my journey and uh, I'm sure our journey too, where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, like this is also oh, we, like music right. Video. We get into this shit too. Um, so it felt like kind of one of those. I don't want to say like stepping like, stones, but for lack of a better term, hey. Hey. behind yeah. the scenes shit, other stuff. You know, stay tuned. Hey. You Easy. know what though? Um, I will say, listening to it, um, and not to compare, but I think it's a fair comparison because we've done it before um and it even makes it that much more relevant this almost sounds like marshall mathers lp mm. um did say m was a or no the uh, what is it the eminem lp the first one yeah, yeah, the, marshall 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 the first marshall mathers yeah um you know not not all fire as album. not sloppy but just the voice inflection makes you feel like his mind is racing a mile a minute um, and he's just trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you listen to like later M, it's very cool, calculated, precise. It's like sniper shots. You know exactly where he's going. Same thing if you listen to Dechita, like sniper shots. He knows exactly what he's saying. Sniper and, versus a machine gun or something. Right, and you know what I mean? And, and know exactly what he's saying and where his shots are going to land and who he's going to hit, as opposed to just walking in the room and just spraying everybody. Um, and, and that that's the kind of the kind of vibe this one gives me. Um, even in the production, it's just kind of like very, very gritty. Like you know, yo, give me the, give me the nastiest, filthiest beat you got, bro. Give me that beat. Fool. Give me yeah. Full time Jack move. Full time Jack move, son. Um, yeah, that that's that's just the kind of parallels I got. Like listening to it, um, it 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 just sounded like. It sounded like him. It didn't sound not like him, but it sounded like him, but it just sounded like a version of him that's just, I just got to get the shit off my chest, bro. Nah, I agree. And that's why earlier I was just like, it um, almost maybe sounds chaotic to to almost maybe parallel what life might have felt like for him at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, like you said, I'm pretty, it's all on purpose because he's so surgical and it's kind of like a part of his aesthetic um, that, you know, he's kind of like the raptician. Um, and I feel like, you know, when you hear artists kind of go with this approach, first off, it differentiates itself from like other stuff that they have going on. And it also is kind of one of those things that Kurt always alludes to where it's like you're now using your voice to kind of also double down on whatever the content is to kind of put the audience in that seat on how to feel. So it's like double reinforcement where it's like, you know, your voice inflections are making me feel away, the subject matter is making me feel away, the beat is making me feel away, and now I'm perfectly set in the story that you're telling the audience. And yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. You yeah. know, anything else you want to add, bro? Yeah, the last thing I was really going to add was, um, as well, just to kind of wrap things up as well, is like, you know, I like how the song wraps up, obviously, with the, you know, the number um, that we don't quite know, like, uh, at the time or anything like that, and I can only allude to it, of course. But at the end, he's basically going through all these frustrations, you know, not having that safety net and everything, talking about how hard things in and everything he has to do, you know, working, I have to be the breadwinner for the house, you know, the, and I'm not sure exactly at this time, but I, I believe so at least. Um, no, actually, yeah, it, it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, so he would have been dealing with the shoulder issue and all that, you know, mm -hmm. well, you know, around this time. So it's like, 
you know, I'm injured. I'm trying to win, you know, money for the family. I'm not trying to, you know, do this. But then I also got to finish school. And, you know, I'm still trying to do music and, and just balancing all those things, feeling like, you know, the weight of the world really is on your shoulders. And, you know, if you don't make it, no one else will around you. Like, you're kind of that last hope. Um, so I just think that that's, you know, really incredible and, and speaks a lot to his, um, you know, even just, like, how much you have to hold in and not talk about that, even though those things are really, like, eating away at you. Um, and that's certainly something that's, you know, um, made me bias him early on as far as like, you know, mm -hmm. just how much he had to kept con keep contained um, and hold off on. But then um, to get back to my point, like as far as the ending, um, he's going through all this, you know, venting all that frustration and, you know, um, and then he gets to the end. He's like, and then one day the phone call came and we don't really get like that ending line, but obviously it's the, the title of the track seemingly. Mm -hmm. And I can only assume that's like the, hey, you're going to debut or hey, you know, uh, like whatever the case might have been from the mm -hmm. agency or like, hey, we're going to accept you as a trainee or whatever. Um, so to basically, th this was like that Hail Mary shot that finally came through. Um, and, you know, for it being August D, as far as, you know, the, the um, alter ego, you know, and then everything that that represents as far as like, you know, uh, like glaring at the, you know, the shadow self, the negativity and everything like that to kind of get to that point at the end. Um, and I know D1 is like a very, you know, short album thing. It's only like, you know, maybe two tracks and then skits, I think, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, or something. But um, just kind of like song wise to kind of tie it together between like everything I want and then I got that call at the end you know from give it to me and then this I just mm -hmm. think that that's really uh like a good stepping off point uh to then you know later get into D2 and, and to kind of give you a sense of his story really you know um so I just think that this was you know really well done the only thing I would rebut um is would you consider August D his alter ego I would probably it's, consider yeah. Sugar his alter ego and August D being who he actually is. Well, the shadow self, you have to acknowledge the shadow you, self because it's, <laughs> you have to acknowledge the shadow self because it, it's something that, you know, is a part of you. And it's, mm. it, it's, it's that part of you that you're scared to look in the mirror and admits there, you know, the whole, and I'm sure you see this with like Joker philosophy as far mm -hmm. as like un, you, uncovering that or bringing that to the surface uh, that we're all this, but we subvert it. Um, it it's, it's very interesting uh, duality for sure. Yeah, but, but one could argue August D yeah. is who he's always been. Should yeah. be somebody who just came along later. No, that's that's definitely understandable too, because um, it's certainly a, it's certainly a part of him that exists. So it's I don't dwell maybe it. not like quite like alter ego, but I guess just that that like um, like almost in a compartmentalization sort of way, where it's like I'm setting all this emotion in this particular aspect, and then when I'm revisiting that or, or kind of mm -hmm. going to unpack that, this is the lens I kind of do it through, um, and that would you know be Augustine in this situation. Yeah. But no, it's definitely like you know about accepting that identity. Yeah, no, nah, but it is funny if it is, quote unquote, like his alter ego, because yeah. essentially he seems to be sugar more than anything, just like, you know, Clark Kent might be Clark Kent more than he is Superman most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's, that's funny, depending on like, is it Yugi? Like, is it Shug? Is it Hulk? Is it well, I was always the thing with, uh, you know, like the Batman thing where it's like, are you actually the mask? Because the mask allows you to be your true self or mm -hmm. are you the person underneath that's trying to hide? And, you know, um, just however you look at that, I just think it's really interesting thematically, though. Which is funny because the Bruce Wayne persona is still a character too. No, mm -hmm. exactly. It's exactly, just it's always a he's character. Actually the dick, like kind of <laughs> in most iterations or situations, mm -hmm. to kind of keep people from getting too close to you. But yeah, my fault. The um, this album was for 2016, so um, oh, okay. so you know it's a little earlier on. And like you said, Kurt, only 23 minutes long. Uh, Give it to me is the first track, and we got stuff like Tony Montana on here, and then the so far oh, okay. on. So, you know, there's some fire on here and shit, and we about to jump into another zone from there. If you're not subscribed, I don't know what's going on. You need to be subscribed. It's a sugar day. Show my guy some love. Birthday, Give me some purple hearts in the comments. Ooh. Or August DJ. Jump on the Patreon. We're going to have a good time on there today. We love y'all, Redeemers. We're going to holler love at y'all. Peace.